Hey everyone, this is James here from the Dev Genie Academy, and in this week's episode, we're going to be looking at how to create a simple terrain. Now, this is not going to be the exact terrain we'll be using later on in the series, but it's a good starting point for how we can create a terrain right here, right now, with the code style that we've already got. So without further ado, let's begin. First, if we create a new package called terrain, and also create a new class called terrain, we need to first create a few static final variables. The first one will be the size. So this is going to tell us how big the, the actual terrain is going to be. So it's going to be around about 800 by 800. We also need to specify the vertex count, which is going to be 128. Um, we can also need a position, so where the terrain is going to be placed on the screen. Um, we could put in a rotation there, but it doesn't really seem feasible to put a rotation in, into a terrain. We also need the model, because obviously we need to be attaching a model and a texture to it. So in the constructor we need a position, we need a the object loader itself of loader. Going forward we will be making the object loader a static class. Uh, we also need a material as well for that texture. So the position itself is going to be equaling to the position that we pass into it. We also need to create a function called generate terrain where we pass the object loader in. And the last thing we need to do in the constructor is just use the set material for the model and we just pass the material straight into it. So going into the model class, we need to set up that set material. So we can just do a setter for material and then that just sets that for us. So we can close that down and that will fix that error of set material. So next up, now we need to create that generate terrain function. It's going to return a model because obviously we are setting the model to against this. And we need to take in that object loader of the loader itself. So first of all, what we need to do is basically set it up as if we would do any other model. There's a few other things that we need to do. So first of all, we need to establish the count. So that's the vertex count multiplied by itself. So we get the total number of vertices that we're going to be using. And then obviously we need to create the the vertices, the indices, the normals, and the texture coordinates. So there we go. So we have a float array for vertices and normals, which is just count multiplied by three. Another float for the texture coordinates, which is count multiplied by two. And then finally, we have the int array for the indices. The indices calculation is done slightly different, and I found the sweet spot is to do six multiplied by the vertex count. In parentheses, put vertex count negative one. We can then multiply that by the vertex count of negative 1 again. So the total calculation should be 6 multiplied by vertex count negative 1 multiplied by vertex count negative 1. We can then create a local vertex pointer integer. We don't have to instantiate that to anything, but next up we need to do a for loop where we iterate over that vertex count. So it's just a standard for loop where i is less than vertex count, incrementing i as we go along, and then we do another vertex count loop because obviously again we're doing vertex count multiplied by vertex count so in those two inner for loops this is where we can start populating the vertices the normals the texture coordinates and the indices with information the first one is vertices of vertex pointer multiplied by three that will be j divided by vertex count negative 1.3 f make sure your vertex count 1.3 is in parentheses multiply that by size and then the next vertices is plus one and we just make that to zero for now because that will be our height map going forward for now we're just going to have a simple flat terrain and then we can start doing build upon that over the next few episodes but before we get there we'll need to look at first of all how to texture the terrain how we can get potentially multiple textures onto that said terrain with limitations of course um, but going back to this vertices, the next point that we need to make is vertex pointer multiplied by 3 plus 2. That's going to be i divided by vertex count negative 1 multiplied by the size. And moving on to the normals now, so it's again vertex pointer multiplied by 3 initially. Set the first point to 0. Vertex pointer multiplied by 3 plus 1 is going to be 1, so it's pointing, the normal is going to be pointing straight up into the sky. And then plus 2 is going to be vertex pointer of 0. Next up is the first of the two positions we need to set in the texture coordinates. So that's now vertex pointer multiplied by two. And that's going to be pretty much the same as the first point calculation we did for the vertices. So just copy that line down. And then we can copy the entire line to make the second point. Because all we do in the second line is just change j to i. And of course the vertex pointer needs to be plus one as well. 
So that's our texture coordinate set up. So all we need to do now is do vertex pointer plus plus just to increment that across as we loop through. Outside of both of those for loops now we can create another integer of a pointer which is going to instantiate that to zero for now. There we go. And then we can create those for loops again. So at this time we're going to do a Z component and it's going to be Z negative vertex counter negative 1.0 this time. There we go. And the second for loop, it's pretty much the same, but we'll use an X, just so we're not repeating the same values. It's vertex counter negative 1.0. So in this loop, what we need to do now is we need to work out the indices. So we can do that in a few stages. We can first create an integer for the top left indices, and this will be in parentheses Z multiplied by the vertex count and then just plus x and we can copy that line to create the top right and the bottom left and the bottom right as well okay bottom right there we go so the top left is fine that's done the top right if we remove that code and just do top left plus one the bottom left isn't too different to top left but it is z plus one multiplied by vertex count and make sure you put the z plus one in parentheses so that's calculated before it's multiplied by the vertex count and then bottom right this is pretty much exactly the same as top right so all we do is bottom left plus one and that gives us our calculation for our four indices on each point the next thing is just adding them into the indices array so it's indices of pointer plus plus of top left bottom left top right, top right again, bottom left, and then also bottom right. There we go, so that's all our pointers established. And outside of those four loops, we can then do a return of a loader.loadModel of the vertices, the texture coordinates, the normals, and the indices. So that's our model created and passed back into the constructor. Next up is just to create getters for the position and the model. We can also create another function here of the material, of just get material. This getter will just return model.getMaterial. So model.getMaterial. And we can also do one for the texture as well. So if we just copy that function, paste it in, and change it to a public texture of get texture, and then it's just return model.getTexture. It's just so we don't have to keep on looping through into the model to get those two values. And that is the terrain class pretty much done. Um, we have got an error here because I haven't instantiated vertex pointer initially after I already said not to, but that's erroring, so let's just say vertex pointer equals zero. The next step is to create a terrain renderer, and we can cheat a little bit here because it's pretty much exactly the same as the entity renderer as it is now. So we can copy the entity renderer, copy it and change it to terrain renderer, and there's a few things we need to do, of course. Obviously, the list of entities is not relevant here. So first of all, if we get rid of the map of model of entities, and then just do a, san uh, a standard list of terrain, and then just call that terrains. And in the constructor, we can just get rid of that line there as well. And then we can just say terrains equals a new array list of terrains. Pretty standard stuff. An array list, there we go. And we just need to import that and also terrain. Let me grab that as well, please. There we go. So the init method shouldn't need to change at all, other than the fact we need to change these vertex shader and fragment shaders. And there we go. So it's, it, they're isolated between each other now. In the constants, what I want to do, instead of statically setting those lights to, to 5 each time, let's create a new static final int of max spotlight. And let's just make that 5. Um, we can create another one there for the max point lights as well and make that five as well there we go right there finally okay and then instead of statically setting this to five we can just do constant dot max point lights and const dot max spotlights there we go if we just copy those two lines into our entity renderer just so they're not they are consistent just because we're using that value more than once now and in the renderer, all we need to do is do a for loop of our terrains. So it's just for terrain, terrain of terrains. Terrain, terrain, terrain. And we can then pass the terrains model into the bind. 
uh, we don't need this second list or this for loop all we need to do is just the prepare where we're passing the terrain and in the draw elements it's just terrain.getModel and we can get rid of that empty line and instead of clearing the entities here we can just clear the terrains so looking at the class now it may appear that only the getter of the get entities is erroring out however in the prepare method we're passing an object in and we're casting that to an entity so that won't necessarily work so we need to change that to cast to a terrain passing in the terrain and just for ease let's just change the object name to terrain as well this will create another error because our transformation of create transformation matrix is expecting en an entity not a terrain so we can we will need to go into our transformations class and create that new function uh, but first let's just fix that getter of the list of terrains instead of entities and just return terrain again so that should fix everything apart from the transformation let me just fix that bit there yes yeah, so all we need to do now is in the transformation we need to create a transformation matrix but passing in a terrain so it's pretty much the same name of it we can still call it a create transformation matrix and we can pass it in a terrain instead of an entity. We need to obviously, of course, create a new matrix for F. And then we do matrix.identity.translate. And it's just terrain.getPosition. And then we just need to do scale of 1. Because again, we're not doing rotation in our terrain. So we just need the position and the scale. And that will resolve that issue for us there. So that is the terrain renderer done. So in the renderer manager, we can create an instance of that terrain renderer. And in the constructor, we just need to, sorry, in the init method, not the constructor, we need to instantiate that terrain renderer. And then make sure we initialize the terrain renderer as well. In it, there we go. So all we need to do now is in the render method, is we just need to do the render function for the terrain renderer. So here we are. So after entity renderer, if we do terrain renderer dot render with the camera, the point light, the spotlight, and the directional light. There we go. So we also need to have a process terrain function, but it's going to be much more simple than the entity one we've currently got. So in this function, all we need to do is one line. It's just terrain renderer dot get terrain dot add the terrain that we're passing in. That's all we need to do there. And in the cleanup method, don't forget to do terrain renderer dot clean up there we go so next up is the vertex shader and the fragment shader again we can just copy the entity fragment the entity vertex we can just copy those outright because there's not really much changing other than in the vertex itself so the fragment shader is exactly the same there's no changes needed there in the vertex shader however if we do frag texture coordinate of texture coordinate divided by 2.5 that's why I found the best position to be now moving into the test game class we can put all of this together and then we can test to make sure everything's working as expected so we can create a private list of those terrains to pass into the terrain renderer in the init method just before we instantiate the entities we can instantiate the terrains to a new array list and then we can create a new terrain so remember in the constructor we need a vector 3f for the position so new vector 3f. We're going to do this to 0, negative 1, and then negative 800. So that way that the terrain is moving away from us and instead of it not being behind us. We pass in the loader, and then we need to create a material here. So we can do a new material of a new texture. And I'm just going to add in a load texture of textures of terrain.png. Now this is just a standard file. I think it's a grass block, I think what it is. Like a grassy texture. Um, the reflectance can be 0 0.1, that's fine. And we can create a second instance of this just to make sure the list is working fine. Call it Terrain 2. Um, this one will be x of 800. Sorry, x of negative 800, as well as the negative 800 on the z. And um, I'll change that texture to flowers. Again, it's just a, a random Google search for the files and just resizing as we need. Again, it needs to be in the power of 2. And then we can just do terrains.add terrain and terrains.add terrain2. 
and I'll have a look at this error here because I've missed something out. A new material. Okay, if we go into the material class, this is the constructor we're looking at. If we copy this constructor, and in, as well as that, if we add a float for the reflectance, and just pass the reflectance in there, that should stop the error showing up. There we go. There we go, so that's that error gone now. So moving into the update, so where we've got the for loop for our entities, we can do the same thing for our terrains. So we can process that, there we go, so renderer.process terrain of terrains. So now when we go to test that code now, we can see that we've got two terrains rendered to the screen, and they're moving away from us. And the textures are being sliced quite nicely, so they're not too blocky. That's everything for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.